I have many projects that I'd like to try, but I don't want to be digging through a bunch of wall warts to find the appropriate power supply. So with that, I'm going to build a power supply that provides three adjustable outputs. I bought these components from Amazon and thought that they would be suitable. Let's take a look at what I'm going to be working with. Two of the voltage outputs will be provided by these buck-down converters, and since the LM2596S is the heart of these devices, they can supply a maximum of 3 amps. The output voltage is adjustable by this potentiometer to voltages between 1.25 volts to 35 volts. I do see that the 220 microfarad output capacitor is only rated at 35 volts. This could be a failure concern if operating close to the maximum 35 volt value. They look to be well made and their footprint is nice and small. Input is on one side with the output on the opposite side, and both are indicated on either side of the PCB. The third output will be provided by this device, a constant voltage, constant current programmable power supply module. The input voltage can be between 6 and 55 volts DC. The output voltage is adjustable from 0 to 50 volts, and the output current is also adjustable from 0 to 5 amps. The PCB also seems well built as does the chassis. Input-output connections are via Phoenix connector that can be unplugged. In looking at the directions, there seems to be some translation issues for the device's operation. Now, all these devices do not convert AC into DC voltages, but from DC to DC. The AC to DC is handled by this switching power supply which I will use externally. It is a single DC 36 volt power supply at a capacity of 10 amps. There is a cooling fan that appears to be thermostatically controlled as per the English description. The input AC voltage is also selectable between 110 volts and 220 volts AC. Connection to the power supply is broken out to this terminal block. I do like the included protection strip. We see the AC input including ground and three parallel DC outputs and are all clearly marked. To the left side of the terminal strip, there is a fine adjust potentiometer for setting the output voltage as well as a power indicator. Now, there is one thing I don't see. It's any indication of a fuse. Let's open it up and see if it's internal. There it is. A quick test to make sure it's not DOA. I'm going to confirm that the voltage adjustment works and what the range actually is. The case seems to fit together well without any sharp or jagged edges. So far so good. I bought a pack of banana terminals to use in this project because there are four different colors and four of each color. A wrench for mounting as well as a small Phillips screwdriver is included in the case. Let's disassemble one of these terminals and see what it's like.
The actual terminal collar is screwed on the terminal and the fit is a little loose. The insulator seems to be fine, but I do have concern that the supplied washer doesn't cover more of the insulator collar. If the nut is torqued down too much during mounting, there is a chance that the collar might split. Overall, they do feel a little light duty for my taste, so I probably wouldn't buy them again. All the buck converters will be installed in this plastic project box. If we open it up, we can see the four long screws to secure the two halves together, along with the four feet. There is, however, no screws to mount any circuitry to the inside of the box. There is some venting on the back panel, which is generally good. Looking at the finish of the box, I see that some of the edges are rather rough, one of which is inhibiting the correct fitment of the two halves. This can all be addressed before painting, but thought I'd let you know. I'm using masking tape so that I can mark the layout of the faceplate before drilling and cutting out the openings. I'll drill a hole for the power barrel connector next. I was going to buy an on-off switch, but in rummaging around, I thought I could use this slide switch from a discarded ceiling fan. It's marked at 6 amps, 120 volts AC, so I'll give it a try. Now that all the openings have been completed, I've applied a coat of paint. There isn't any real schematic on this one, just positive to positive, negative to negative, and being aware of inputs and outputs. I'll solder wires to the buck converter's input and output. Once complete and using hot glue, we'll mount the converters in place. The barrel connector and switch are mounted and wired together. Since this is a double pole, double throw switch, I'm going to double up and use both poles for switching the positive voltage. All the negative wires will go directly to the barrel connector. The inputs of the buck converters are connected to the on off switch and the barrel connector. I'll mount the banana terminals and wire the outputs of the buck converters to them. The great thing about these Phoenix connectors is that I don't have to mount the module until the wiring is complete. Before applying power, I'm going to turn the potentiometer of the small converters to their lowest position. Let's apply the power and see if any smoke comes out. I'm going to attempt to adjust the output of the first converter and confirm that the output can be adjusted from 1.25 volts to 30 volts.
I will set the first converter to 5 volts to power devices like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. I'll confirm the second converter as well. I will set this one at 6 volts to power devices like servo motors. Now let's test the converter module starting with a low voltage test first. We'll set the voltage to 5 volts, turn on the output and check the voltage on the DVM. Turning off the output and changing the voltage to 10 volts. We'll continue to go up and test at 20 volts. And the last test will be at 30 volts. That worked well. Without too much effort or cost, we can build a 3-output adjustable power supply for projects that require multiple voltages.